Darren, just please remember, okay? Take him to nursery. It's all right, babes. Don't worry. <laughs> Hang on a second. Sir, we're, we're gonna have to take the kid. I, I promise, I can look after him, I swear. Sir, where is the kid now? Oh, I knew I was forgetting something. Yeah, take him away. <laughs> Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This, of course, the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, Twitter has been dominated by Tommy Fury and Jake Paul's fight, where Tommy managed to save the entire sport of boxing with a win. He stated that Jake Paul didn't have a real job after the fight. Brave from a man who's been a social media influencer for the last three years. Jake would have won if he just worked harder. We all had the same 24 hours in the day. Cristiano Ronaldo was in the crowd here, but he wasn't too impressed by it all. He's not seen this much of a money-grabbing exercise in Saudi Arabia since his last deal. Meanwhile, Drake put an eye-watering bet down on Jake Paul to win. This guy has a gambling addiction. I would not be shocked if he bets on Macedonian netball matches. His next hacker is definitely featuring a Harrison Reed first yellow. Now, on to the football and where else to start than the Carabao Cup final between Newcastle and Manchester United. Now, it's been a long time since New Newcastle featured in a final and their fans went all out in London for it. <laughs> Even Eddie Howe reminded the squad of the last major trophy they won might need to add an extra one to that. As United ended up claiming the first silverware of the season with a 2-0 win over the Magpies. This despite a huge Newcastle presence at Wembley. Crazy to see most United fans getting outnumbered in their own city. Newcastle fans were getting combative on the way down, passing Sunderland supporters on the bus. I love it. This is like year nine settings. This is what this platform was missing, bro. <laughs> Straight <laughs> out, direct <laughs> aggression. I've not seen this much anger on the road since Insulate Britain. Due to Nick Pope's suspension and Newcastle had Loris Carius in net, of course. It's been a long time since the Liverpool final. Like, I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, jeezy pips, man. Diogo Dallo fancied his chance of shooting from 57 yards, knowing that Loris wouldn't Bits. save it. But to be honest, the German wasn't bad and couldn't do much with either Casemiro or Rashford's goal. Alan Son Maximan had a tough time against Wan Bissaka down the line and was bringing out all the stops against him. Their only hope at half time was unavailable, unfortunately. Meanwhile, Anton Deck were discussing tactics at the break, knowing Marcus Rashford is serving them up more than a free school meal. Well, I can't do it. Dan Burn is lanky. Get him out of here. Speaking of which, and him versus Anthony on the other side was interesting. Imagine being a Saudi taxpayer, knowing you're paying for Matt Ritchie's wages. Meanwhile, in the crowd, and I've seen this man on TV so much that he might as well be a Sky presenter. I don't know, Jeff, has it? United would lift a trophy in the end, though. Valt Veghorst was delighted. Casemiro was gripping it tightly. He was still frustrated at Bruno after full time for not passing it to him. Meanwhile, Christian Eriksen has been physically revived, come back to life and won a trophy before Harry Kane. He spudded an angel and said, nah, I'm actually good. Here we have Harry turning up at Old Trafford in the 64th minute trying to force through a move. Meanwhile, Harry Maguire lifting this cup is like Salt Bay lifting it for God's sake. Eric Ten Hag was delighted at full time though, dancing with his players, something he was famous at Ajax for doing too. Piers Morgan called it a Embarrassing. He was watching on his TV screen, absolutely fuming. Fuck, look at him. Someone punched the twat. Look at him. He's gonna do it again. Get it off. Oh, fuck off. Get out. My eyes are bleached. Speaking of Piers, him and Cristiano Ronaldo deserve a medal, to be honest. Sensational assist because since he's left, United have been unreal. There'll be a new interview coming soon as Ronaldo tries to get back to United. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. After a loan spell earlier in the season and Martin Dubravka got a medal despite his parent club being beaten, Martin arrived into the United dressing room at full time very pleased indeed and was showing it off to the Newcastle players on the bus back home. Meanwhile for Newcastle fans and one supporter got a tattoo predicting that they'd win. I mean look listen just edit the N to an M and it's gone. That's two trophies down for United now. The quintuple is on. Now FIFA's the best awards were also in the news as Lionel Messi scooped up the biggest award of them all. 
We saw the best 11 announced, first of all, which included Virgil van Dijk, based on predominantly aura alone. In his speech, though, when Virgil thanked his fellow players for voting for him, because they understand what he goes through on a day-to-day -day basis. This guy is going through it. They know he has to play with Jordan Henderson and James Milner. Emi Martinez took home the best goalkeeper award. That's the first time anything's been the best in Birmingham. Kylian Mbappe's reaction was priceless. His dad wasn't too pleased seeing Argentina's coach win best manager. When I'm through with you. Oh. And as I mentioned, it was Leo who would take home the main award. This after he spent the ceremony ADHDing. Someone get him a Tamagotchi to play with and call it a day. Either that or he's trying to find Cristiano Ronaldo in the crowd. One man not happy though was Karim Benzema, who posted a cryptic Instagram story after Leo won, followed by his stats and records for the season, obviously claiming that he should have won the prize instead, to which Leo had one reply. The guy told him to go to bed. Karim was sat at a table at the end of the night demanding some kind of award. To be categorically clear, I'm not going anywhere until we win tonight. Leo's speech felt like a further dig at the Frenchman. Everybody want to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. And Kareem also finished behind his fellow countryman Kylian Mbappe here too. Hardly the first time a black male's got the better of him. His Real Madrid teammate David Alaba voted for Lionel Messi too. And Benzema is not going to be happy when he catches him at Real Madrid training. Hey, yo, don't let him do that I've been there for you since day one! Now, in the Premier League, and a disastrous season is getting even worse for Chelsea. After a 2-0 loss to London rival Spurs, I'm pretty sure they're on less wins than Tommy Fury this year. In fact, for that matter, since November the 6th, they've only scored 6 goals in 15 games. To put that into perspective, United have scored 50 in the same time, and Rashford has 18 alone. Graham Potter's win percentage is horrible. It's less than Jack Grealish's GCSE results. Oh, wow. Todd Bowley's fuming, realising that all the cash has gone to absolutely nothing. Pretty pissed off with it all, to be honest. Um, put all this work in, spend all that money, and just end up with nothing, really. At least he has a plan for Potter in their next board meeting. Meanwhile, Enzo Fernandez is wondering if his ticket is a return. The first goal of this one came courtesy of Oliver Skip's first goal for Tottenham, and it was a banger as well. Todd is making a £157 million bid for Oliver Skip as we speak. Mikhailo Mudrik is currently camped outside Arsenal headquarters trying to impress their staff. Thiago Silva's wife is probably kicking off on Twitter again. Meanwhile, Ruben Loftus-Cheek is completely done for. Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. Tempers flared just before half-time in this one. Aye, bro, watch out, man. Back off. Aye, did somebody say back off? With a scuffle and a Ziek red card, only for VAR to change it to a yellow. Here's the card Hakim was actually given. You must be sick if you think Ziek wanted to play the second four. 45 minutes. He was going over the top at the referee to try and ensure that he was fully sent off by the official. If anybody gets in my face, I'm knocking them out. Come on, John. Best I mean what I say. Tommy's fight time. I don't care. All that drama didn't stop Pierre Emil Hoybier and Kai Havertz having a tango. Mason Mount was devastated at the loss till realising it was one step closer to Graham Potter's sacking. Meanwhile, Chelsea are now apparently interested in current Brighton boss the Zerbi. Not getting a Brighton manager again, lads. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson? But it hasn't been been all good news for Tottenham after they were knocked out of the FA Cup at the fifth round by Championship Sheffield United. Top spur? No, no. What's that? Ah, oh, these are honestly the jokes right themselves. Another year without silverware? I know where Harry Kane's gonna be in approximately 38 minutes from now. Even workers on the TFL have had enough at this point. Good morning and welcome to the Central Line. Just let you all know that Tottenham are shit. It's all very predictable for Spurs fans these days. Uh, yeah, I'll go with option C, pain. Meanwhile, Hungmin Son will be devastated at Beyonce's concert knowing that she's the only person to actually perform in that stadium. Elsewhere in the FA Cup though, and there is the incredible giant killing story of League 2 Grimsby knocking out Premier League side Southampton. It's lovely to see that Adam Armstrong has finally found his level. Southampton had actually banned Grimsby supporters from taking their inflatable haddock mascot to the game. They weren't listening and got their revenge. I'm sure most Grimsby fans weren't expecting too much at the start of the game, but Grimsby's admin was confident from the get-go, spelling no doubt about it from the first letter of their tweet giving updates for the match. Now, the Heat is still on in the Premier League title race as Manchester City thrashed Bournemouth at the Vitality. Jack Grealish was getting grief from Bournemouth fans, so he reminded them of the score. Simple, but effective from Jack. Rico Lewis couldn't contain himself for the drama as City scored their first. Erling Haaland was feeling powered up here, helped by an addiction to carrots. If the 
floodlights go out here, he's dangerous. After beating Leicester 1-0 earlier, Arsenal could have done with a result here, to be honest. Mikel Arteta was on his way to motivate the Bournemouth players, but honestly, it didn't help all that much. And Arsenal fans were fuming, seeing a notification for Man City's 73rd shot on target in the game. Arsenal fans will be more pleased with the notification telling them they beat Everton 4-0, though. Yeah, just cold from start to finish, really. Martin Odegaard did a Rabona tackle. Meanwhile, Sean Dyche is left to take things out on his team. In further Chelsea news, and there's rumours that Ukrainian signing Mikhailo Mudrik is already unhappy at the club. He wants to get out of his 26-year deal and go back to Ukraine, you know. In this climate, he's going to be taken to Instagram tomorrow trying to get out of Chelsea jail. Brentford striker Ivan Tony's pleaded guilty to over 260 counts of betting infringement. The jokes are on the police when they realise he slapped £500 on him getting arrested. He'll be heading into Ladbrokes tomorrow demanding that they pay out. Please, the fuck, I'm only back. I want my money back. I want my money back now. Look, listen, all Ivan wants is a second chance, okay? Lads, I swear, I won't do it again, all right? At least let me play against Fulham so we can win 2-1. Uh, yeah, all right, I guess you... Wait, hang on. How do you already know the score? Tottenham and Formula 1 have partnered together to create a karting track underneath Spurs' ground. It's lights out and away we go. To the opposition. After previous pictures, does this mean Lando Norris will be signing for Tottenham? Nah, to be honest, he's got too much silverware in his cabinet. Meanwhile, Eric Dyer was devastated finding out that he can't activate DRS to actually run fast. In UK politics, and Rishi Sunak wants to host an away day for Tory MPs to discuss how they can win the next general election. Mate, I tell you what, Labour away is gonna be raucous. I forget about it. You can't tell me Rishi Sunak knows what a goalkeeper is. Speaking of politicians and using their hands, Matt Hancock has caused a stir again. After he appeared in a video wearing a signed Newcastle shirt that he was supposed to have auctioned away over two years ago. What happened was the guy who bought it then um, then gave it back to me uh, as a gift, which is really kind of him. I'm very grateful, so I've still got my... Uh... My beloved signed shirt. I thought politicians were supposed to be good at lying. Mate, when the lucky winner turned up at his house asking for the shirt, Matt was dipping straight out of there. And elsewhere, and one kid playing football has clearly been inspired by Emiliano Martinez. Arsenal centre-back Rob Holding is a new man. No, genuinely, that is Roberto Holding. This man's been turkey on seven different occasions. Look how long his hair is. His shampoo has to come with a charger. Honestly, I respect him, man. That, this is crazy. Hey, yo, is that Tarzan coming through? His centre-back partner. Ben White genuinely hates football. The favourite part of your day and why? Your night person, your morning person, is it training, is it when training's over? When he's back home from training. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably trainer. Yeah. Not all the stuff before. At Fulham in the FA Cup and Marco Silva was furious at an official, so much so that he missed Jao Paulinho's strike. And at Chelsea Women, Lauren James is reminding Arsenal supporters of the scoreline. I'm a big one for consistency, so it's a sh** Housery award. Now, the race for the La Liga title took twists and turns this week, with first of all, Real Madrid drawing against City rivals Atletico 1-1. was a very harsh, I thought at least, red card for Angel Correa for swinging his arm into Antonio Rudiger. Rest in peace, the big German centre-back man. He's doing high knees in heaven now. Mate, Carlo Angelotti raised an eyebrow in the VAR room for God's sake. Diego Simeone was in disbelief of it all, but Aleti still took the lead through centre-back Jimenez. However, youngster Alvaro Rodriguez would equalise for Real and become an instant hero. Matt Doherty was on the bench and was still fuming at career at full time, though he didn't quite know how to express it. It was a huge chance for Barcelona, therefore, to open a lead over Real, which is, of course, why they lost to 19th placed Almeria. <laughs> Javi's eyebrows don't really cut it, I'm afraid. Marcus Rashford was at home, knowing that Barca had been rumbled by their Europa League victory. Look around you. Look at this. We created this. That Spotify sponsorship needs to turn to a SoundCloud one, mate. Meanwhile, all Barca did was cross in this game. I don't know why that was their tactic. I know it's March, but it's not quite Easter yet, lads. No need for the cross. Back at Real and Eder Militao doesn't quite understand understand going incognito. Former Portsmouth goalkeeper Shaka Hislop had his catching ability tested on La Liga television. What it is? Yeah, I don't know. I might have lost it a little bit, lads. Not gonna lie. Meanwhile, there was a mental game at Elche versus Real Betis. First of all, it was a five-goal thriller. But second of all, there were three penalties in this one. One given to Elche in the seventh minute, who then took a 2-0 lead in the ninth. But there were shown two red cards in two minutes in the second half. Real Betis then completed the comeback with a second penalty of their own, which led to a third red card for Elche. In France, though, now, and Paris Saint-Germain's chairman is under investigation. For, amongst other things, abduct 
production allegations. Prison FC is going to be balling out when they get a billionaire Qatar takeover. Out on the pitch for PSG though, and they beat Marseille in La Classic 3-0. In this one, Lionel Messi scored his 700th club goal. Karim Benzema was fuming. I'm better than Messi. It was also a game of records for Kylian Mbappe, who's now PSG's joint all-time top scorer. How? He's still like 12 years old. Marquinhos is in the top 20, and he's a centre-back. This isn't actually league on, is it? This is the Combine Harvester Cup. Meanwhile, down on the dugout, and PSG manager Christophe Gaultier was willing to get into a scrap with Marseille fans. It's fucking happening. In training, and Ethan Mbappe, Kylian's younger brother, is getting bullied in a rondo. Their dad's gonna have to get involved to sort this one out after he's done with Scolari. In Italy, and Juventus team chemistry is at an all-time high. Cakes based upon Napoli frontman Victor Osimen have been going viral across Italy this week. So much so that even Victor managed to get his hands on one. Jose Mourinho was sent off for a third time this season down on the Roma touchline after an altercation with their fourth official where supposedly the official told him to go home because everybody was laughing at him. Hey, these refs are getting out of control. Why are you sending me off? Did you hear what he just said to me? Yeah, we don't care. You're a slag. If I find any of your family members, I will elbow them in the face. They had it coming and I will say that it was your fault. This red card though did leave Cremonense to win their first game of the Serie A season against Mourinho's side and the scenes for their winning goal were sensational. Meanwhile, Torino winger Nemanja Radonjic was absolutely fuming at his manager after being subbed on in the 60th minute then subbed off again 13 minutes later. Yeah, that's crazy. Might as well have bought a ticket like the rest of the Torino fans. In Germany and Borussia Dortmund's incredible run of form is continuing. They're unbeaten this year, except for a game against Vietnam. Bayer Leverkusen fans travel to their game against Freiburg in a party train this week and I am demanding that this becomes a thing in England. Although I don't know if it would go down that well here. This train has now been cancelled. Please all change. Fucking, we haven't even gone anywhere. And in Frankfurt, local artists in the area unveiled a statue of Gianni Infantino. Don't think I really need to add too much to this one. Speaking of putting things in, and it's now time for your goals of the week. First of all, we've got Christian Herrera scoring an unbelievable goal to start off a second half for Sabadell in the Spanish third division. This game later had to be postponed because of the poor weather, but the goal still stands. In Poland and at Rakov, how about this for control and a volley from a corner from Jean Carlos. And finally, over in Antigua and Barbuda, definitely the first time we've ever been here, take about Chevelle Cunningham, flicking the ball over himself and then half volleying it in from ridiculous range. Now, speaking of goals, and Cristiano Ronaldo scored his second hat-trick for Al Nazar this week. Honestly, he had a harder time getting through the Jake Paul undercard. Over in the MLS, and Jared Stroud used to play for Austin FC. He returned to his former side playing for St. Louis City, and clearly one of Austin FC's defenders still thought he played for the club. Back that ring didn't start. Oh, that's completely given away. And it's an equaliser. Jared Stroud on his return to Austin. There's the incredible story of Sparkenberg over in the Netherlands, a semi-professional side who have now made the semi-finals of the Dutch Cup after slapping Eredivisie side Utrecht for one. And finally, there is the beautiful story of Luca Lokashvili, who won the FIFA Fair Play Award after helping to save the life of an Austria-Vienna player who'd swallowed his tongue. A real reminder of the human side of the beautiful game. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> And that concludes the beautiful game. Now, over in Portugal and the world's oldest footballer, Kazuyoshi Maiora, is showing that he isn't just there to be a mascot because at the age of 56, he scored an absolute screamer this week. Staying in Portugal and we've got even more style points on show at Santa Clara with this own goal. Craig Revel Hall. In Turkey, and there were beautiful scenes at Besiktas's most recent game, where fans threw thousands of stuffed teddy bears onto the pitch to be donated to children affected by the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. The greatest moment I've seen in Premier League football. That is appalling league good skill. Get me, because it's mad. Over in the J League, and I honestly don't know what Takuya Wada is doing for Yokohama FC, but he's probably provided the best own goal of the year. At Shakhtar, and despite winning 4-1, the goal that they conceded is not going to be forgotten by their goalkeeper. Yeah, now nah, you know what? I'm going to stay at Chelsea. In Brazil, and you're in desperate need of a spot kick, what do you do to ensure that it looks as realistic of a dive as possible? It could have been killed. Damn. Yeah, fucking Tom Dalyinho over here. In Denmark, 
Then Mark now and you leave the field of play devastated and frustrated against Nordschland. But what did the poor corner flag do to you? He's got a family at home. Dad, no. Trabs on sport thought they'd scored against Basel in European competition last week. Their fans set off a ton of flares only for it to be disallowed through VAR, which then left a cloud of smoke to cover the entire pitch. At Sligo Rovers and their commentator is not mincing his words after this debatable penalty call. The challenge Rovers happened take the outside the shagging box. Excuse my French. In the A-League now and it's great that Australian officials have allowed referees to dress how they act. Back in the Netherlands and if Ado Den Haag won a result, their forwards are going to have to channel their inner Maradona. Scherpe voorzet van Kishna. No, we meant by being good, not by the hand of God. Meanwhile, back in the MLS, and shout out Thiago Almada, who didn't make it into goals of the week, but scored two absolute screamers in extra time to win his side the game. Now there is time for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, this beautiful, beautiful nation has really been delivering recently, and that continues today, because after scoring for Dino Bucharest, Valentin Borcea was rewarded for his goal against Unirea Constanta by a fan throwing 100 euros at him from the crowd. Now, closer to home and after a goal conceded by the team he supports, Jeff Stellings had enough of it all. Tom Nels has scored for Walsall uh, against Hartlepool. I'm just going to take a brief break while I go and slash my wrist. Uh, in the meantime... And there were scenes down in the lower leagues at Walthamstow, who unbelievably were 4-3 down due to goals in the 87th and 90th minute. But down to 10 men in the 91st, 92nd and 96th minute, they would then turn it around to win 6-4. Fucking word within that Over at Treaty United in Ireland, and their admin is not too impressed by a Galway supporter using a megaphone this week. In Iraq now, and at Naft Al Basra, this is probably one of the most comedic goalkeeper mistakes we've seen in a while. In Chile and at Puerto Montt, I think down in the second division of their league system, we've got an own goal here being scored with passion. If you want my opinion, match fixing me. I'll be honest with you, the state of the pitchers over in the Comoros Premier Division probably needs a little bit of looking at. In Indonesia now. We might have seen a howler from Nick Pope handling the ball outside of the area. But how did this shot stop? I think he was going to get away with KO with the ball out to touch with his fists. And at Rosario Central in Argentina, this might be one of the best atmospheres I've ever seen at a football stadium. <laughs> Now that it's time for still nil-nil, and you guys know the score by now, this is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And look at you lucky individuals. We've got two still nil-nil stories this time. First of all, some absolutely vintage Sunday League stuff here, when the pitch really lets down a poor goalkeeper. <laughs> You yeah, know, that is actually a mountain of a molehill. And elsewhere at Mikulova Athletic, there is the beautiful story of 82-year-old Terence Whitaker, who was delegated as the linesman for their match. He apparently told the admin that it was his 2082nd fixture and 67th consecutive season being a lino. More power to you, Terence. On to the weird stuff, though, now. Over in Japan and Yokohama FC are playing against Kashima Antlers this week. To celebrate the occasion, they decided to start serving deer meat at the stage because antlers and deers and that. Back in Europe and a Swedish third division side decided to announce their most recent transfer by recreating Cristiano Ronaldo joining Al Nazar with the finer details also included. And finally, there's the story of a Malaysian coach who's decided he's going to contact an Indonesian witch doctor to get his striker to start scoring again. Yet, clearly, he's not too pleased with his front line not being prolific enough and has decided to call in Juju to make it all better. Lad, I don't think that's going to do the job, mate. That, though, is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video, and of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.